July 15th, 2009, I was training for a triathlon. And it was the, I was in a, on a triathlon team. I was gonna do the mountain biking portion of that triathlon. And it was the last day to, to work out before the race. And I felt stronger than ever. I had just put new tires on my bike and my training partner, I knew I was gonna kick his butt that day. And I was feeling really, really strong and healthy. And about 15 minutes into the ride, I started feeling dizzy. And I started swerving into the road. We hadn't quite gotten into the woods yet. And I couldn't shake it off. So I realized I had to get off my bike and I more or less just kind of fell off my bike and rolled into the woods and everything went black. And I could feel the sweat in my body, but I could feel everything starting to cool down. They got me into an ambulance. The ambulance technician knew that something was pretty severe and wrong. So I think at that point, that person started having contact with the helicopters and Littleton Hospital and that sort of thing. So they did some CAT scans at Littleton Hospital and got me to Dartmouth really quickly. Then on the 16th, they did an eight, I think it was eight hour long brain surgery, where they went and tried to fill in the veins with coils to stop the bleeding. They got most of them. They needed to go in through the back of the skull the next day to put some clamps to finish the, uh, to stop the bleeding. And then maybe it was a few months after that, they had to put a shunt in my head to control the swelling and the pressure. And after those elements were put into place, it stabilized my condition. And the one thing that they had said that would go away was a double vision, because I think it's pretty typical of this type of surgery. However, it just never went away. What happened to my brain, and I wish I could pronounce the Latin term for it, but I cannot. <laughs> it's called an AVM. And the way it was described to me, the way I remember it, is a, a mass of tissue that happens to be located in my brain. I think it could be located in other places of the body, but in my case, it's in the brain. And around 40 years or so, the veins in that mass of tissue can become weak and often bleed. And that's what I believe happened in my case. The follow-up treatment that I had at Dartmouth that was very, very helpful was when I went to the ophthalmology department and I was able to be fitted with these prism glasses that were so much better for me to be able to move around the world. That was fantastic. But the thing that really made a big difference in being able to improve the quality of my life and move into my new life was when I was involved with speech pathology. Um, Mary Sue Turner is absolutely fabulous and Deb Fournier are absolutely fabulous as far as being able to help me create a structure to stimulate my brain and put just enough pressure on my brain so that I could learn to be an artist again. And that was really challenging for me to realize when I first had this um, brain aneurysm that I might not be able to draw again. And that, that, that's probably the most painful part of the story for me personally. Is I, 20 years as a commercial illustrator, I'm psyched I have a degree in art and I actually used it. Uh -huh. Not only that, but personally, because 40 hours a week of drawing, you get really good at drawing, way better than I could have ever imagined when I was in college. So I had all this skill and ability that was, in a way, wiped clean. I made being able to draw again work for me by first allowing myself to be able to take the time I need to deal with the fear that I may never draw again and not to put any pressure on myself to start drawing any sooner than I had to. <laughs> and I'm really glad I was gentle with myself. But at about the 10 month mark, uh, the vice president of the creative department said that I should paint what I see. And he started talking about this artist, Chuck Close, who I love, he's just brilliant. And I started thinking, huh, you know, maybe I should try now to draw what I see because of my wife being so strong and so loving and also an artist. She knew that it was really important for me to spend time, even if it was the only good time I had out of the day, to paint. My first painting was of my friend Jason. Jason would come over to my house and I remember, I remember looking at him and seeing two of them and thinking, wow, that's just such a bizarre, I'm having a conversation with two people. <laughs> He's the first person that really put a pencil in my hand. So I thought to honor him, <laughs> I'd paint him. And that just kind of created this whole 
one painting after another type of thing. If I have to work on the painting, if I have to take my glasses off and work on a painting, I would see four and it would be really chaotic. So I try to keep my glasses on when I paint. So I only see, I only see what I want to, to see. So I create a thumbnail sketch of a double vision portrait and that's what I paint from. So I wear my glasses so I see only a double vision portrait that I've already kind of created with pencil and in photography or what have you, and paint from that. So in a nutshell, it's really interesting is the first painting took me four months to do, five minutes a time. The last painting I did took me five days. So it's really neat. And when you look at the paintings hung up, I have a little description that mentions how much time the first one took. I think the first one took four months, the second one took six months, the third one took three months, and then I had a breakthrough and did one sometime within a month's time. And then another one, it was a few weeks, and the last one was five days. And this is over a period of two years. And it's really fascinating for me to see the, the, the brain's ability to recover and heal and how it can be measured in an 18 by 24 black and white portrait. These paintings for me, I've done so many amazing things. It was such a smart idea to do these. For one, these paintings distracted me from my pain and they allowed me to have a little bit of comfort and enjoy my life for a few minutes out of the day, which was really, really wonderful. The paintings for me also helped me understand what double vision is and what it is that I'm seeing. And because I did six paintings, black and white, all the same size, it really helped me zero in on the elements of perception, which I'm so happy that I now have a greater understanding of. The idea that I could read the story I finally have my paintings come down here hanging at Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center is so amazing to me right now, I honestly can't understand what's taking place today. It'll take me a little while to process the event. I can say, though, last night when the paintings were finally finished, I'd, I'd framed my own paintings as well. When I finally finished framing them and put them all together for the first time, uh, tremendous tears and emotional release took place. In many ways, I'd take the old Ken back in a heartbeat, but since it's not an option for me. I'll accept the fact that I have a second life now and now when I paint it's much easier because I'm not trying to pretend to be anybody other than who I am now. My wife and son have, have been such a blessing in this process. When someone goes through some health issues, most people focus on that person who has been hurt or damaged in some way. The family gets incredibly damaged and hurt through a process like this and it's so taxing and so stressful and I realize just how much love my wife, my son have for me and how much support they have for me to allow me to go through this process. It's very uncomfortable for me and them and to really constantly dig deep and allow me to do the things that I think I need to do to feel better. These doctors, Dartmouth, they saved my life. Not only did they save my life, they, they allowed me to have a quality of life that I enjoy and can still enjoy. I could never pay them back. However, I can show my gratitude and my appreciation by doing the best I can at illustrating I'm going to still seize the day, live life, still have gifts and, and talents. And because of everything they've given me, I want to give back to them. And that's why I wanted to do these paintings, to show them that I'm grateful for the life they gave me and I'm going to make the most of it.